Look at all these spices. They are some of the most important building blocks of our world-beating British cuisine. And the main motivation behind the creation of the Great British Empire. Well, spices were big money, and us Brits were prepared to wage war, invade countries, and ultimately create the world's biggest empire to get our greedy hands on them. Do you know, mate, our spirit of adventure and appetite for spice has got a lot to answer for us. And today's show is about the British Empire and the way it's influenced the food we eat today. Yes. Well, tell you who, Captain Myers. Although our empire has been and gone, its culinary legacy still gives us Brits something to be very proud of. Look at them, man, look. Its rich cultural umbrella swamped us in exotic dishes that have come to define us as a nation. Well, I always think that curries are Scottish. And of course, it's not just improved our food, it's inspired some of our nation's favourite tipples. Fabulous. Marriage made in heaven. Mm. Undoubtedly broadening the tastes and diversifying the diet of our tiny islands. Oh, hang on. Oh. If there's one thing we're still great at, it's food. But first, a little something to wet your whistles. Well, what drink, above all others, says British Empire to you? Probably gin and tonic, my dear fellow. Yes, <laughs> but in Victorian England, Gin was synonymous with the gutter. Really? Yes. Moral corruption. Good Lord. Ah, ladies of the night. Ladies of the night, <laughs> good Lord. So how come it became a drink of the ruling elite? I have no idea, my dear fellow. I tell you what, though, there's a gentleman down my club called Jared Brown. He seems to know a thing or two about gin and the role it played in the building of the mighty British Empire. Drinks historian Jared Brown undertook his first distillation aged 10 and has since gone on to write dozens of books on the subject. Now head distiller at Sipsmiths, he's perfectly qualified to explain gin's empire-inspired Cinderella-like rise from rags to riches. What part do you think that gin played in our British empire? Oh, well, you can look at the ingredients in gin and see a partial map of the empire to start but also where rum rations were the drink of the, the sailors, yes. the officers were given a gin ration. So British gin made it round the world with the officers on board the British naval ships. And that could be, I'm not saying it is, but it could be why gin is now a bit hoity-toity. Which is a, a, a sad thing to think, that, that gin would be considered a bit hoity-toity, because... Anyone can drink and appreciate gin. Well, they did, because it was blamed for prostitution and drunkenness of <laughs> years, wasn't it, you know? It was, you know? Don't bring your home life uh, into this. Shut sure up, will you? Shut sure <laughs> up, you know? <laughs> Only kid inside. Fortunately, where gin was once a crudely distilled anaesthetic for the poor, over the last hundred years, it's evolved into something a little more refined. What makes gin gin? First and foremost, what makes gin gin is juniper. If you just put one botanical into gin, it's this. And these are just off the juniper bush. Mm -hmm. And if you pinch it, it's oily. It's got a nice fresh oh, pine it to it. Of gin. And then the rest of the ingredients in gin are just there to highlight the flavors of the juniper. Yes. So we've got coriander, orange and lemon. There's almond going in. There's orris root. There's cinnamon and cassia. <laughs> Of course, this is Jared's own unique recipe, but most gins these days have developed their very own individual nuances. But what hasn't changed is how you make it. So now that we've established that there's these ingredients, what, what, what do you do with them? How does it work? Well, we can load them into the still if you like. And is that it? That's it. Really, so yeah. that's warm alcohol in there. Yep. Base alcohol. So, God dear me. It does. That's <laughs> like being hit with a hammer. Isn't it? Yeah. Hard, I'll tell you what, it's, that clears your tubes, as they say. Oh, oh it does. Well, should we get these in? Yes, yeah. absolutely. I got the juniper. And I've got the coriander. 
You know, gin, it really symbolises the, the British Empire, doesn't it? People travelled, explored and traded. You know, the cinnamon and the cassia bark were coming in. And obviously oranges and naval oranges. It's amazing. It, it sums up the empire, doesn't it? I'm just amazed that the quantities of the botanicals are so small to flavour that big vat of alcohol. Well, distillation is a remarkable extraction process for flavour. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's also a great way to preserve flavour. So once we bring these flavours over, we get every bit of flavour out and it stays in the bottle. Mm -hmm. And a bottle of gin will keep its flavour for a hundred years. Really? Oh yeah. We'll not be waiting a hundred years to try some of Jared's bespoke gin concoction. But good as it promises to be, it's only half of one of drink's biggest double acts. Because what really propelled gin into higher circles was tonic. Tim Warrilow spent over a year formulating a recipe for, and then producing what he thinks is the perfect tonic water. Three quarters of a gin and tonic is tonic. Yeah. So, you know, the quality of that, we think, is even more important. Uh, it's a match made in heaven. I think that's right, because, you know, it's the bittersweet. Um, and the whole reason this um, relationship came about uh, takes you right back to India. Mm -hmm. um, so it was the British that invented tonic water. And this is all the way back in 1820. And the reason for inventing it was that tonic is a medicine. Um, because the, the real ingredient, the secret ingredient, is quinine. Because quinine is this extraordinary medicinal discovery. And it's the only thing that can prevent you or cure you from malaria. And that was an important thing when we had an empire. With much of our territories spanning continents that were rife with the disease, quinine became the vital ingredient in keeping our soldiers and administrators healthy enough to maintain some sort of order in these hostile lands. It's a naturally derived medicine easily made from grinding down the bark of the cinchona tree into a powder, then mixing it with water into a tonic. Its only drawback was that even with a generous dose of sugar, it was far from pleasant to drink. So, I don't know if I can encourage you to try it, but I would, I would do it with caution. But so when Quinine was first discovered. Oh, yeah. It's there when you when you when actually yeah. And and so this is this is where the marriage of gin and tonic came about. So to make it more palatable, mm. yeah. they mm. added quite a lot of gin. Right. And so this the expression of things like helping the medicine go down. Yes. And it, you know, this is where it all came from. So a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go. Ah, okay. Yeah. Exactly. Why don't we take Tim the tonic and put him together with Jared the gin and make the most perfect gin and tonic I'm with you fortunately for us tonic water has been greatly refined over the years most now use substitutes for natural quinine but Tim's tonic still uses the bark of the cinchona tree for its flavoring and added to a generous dose of Jared's botanically enhanced bespoke gin it has enabled us to finally start to concoct and taste what has now evolved into Britain's most famous drinking double act. This is where everyone has their own view as to what's the garnish. I always think just the rhyme because all the time and trouble has gone into choosing the botanicals. Sure. And so I don't think you want to actually overpower that. And it's just twisting mm -hmm. the zest just to break Th that's it. That's a good looking drink, isn't it? And so one quick mix and there we are. Oh. Much deserved. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, Monk. Well, as the sun sets over the empire, yes. it's probably a good thing, really. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. It's crisp, it's clean, it's citrusy, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? A gentleman, without doubt, that is the best gin and tonic. I've had the pleasure of drinking. Thank you. Absolutely fantastic product, boys. Both fabulous. Marriage made in heaven. Mm. Thank you. Whilst we'll be forever indebted to our empire,